Familiar faces return in a last chance saloon edition of Total Wipeout, but are they ready for the rings of fire? That's in an hour here on BBC One. He was one of the heroes of the afternoon. Uh, applause from the away supporters. The latest score is when we go through the pressure. John Terry's tears, we all know. One goes through through for the week. Good afternoon, welcome to Final Score on a very busy afternoon. Eight games in the Premier League today, as well as a full Football League programme. So Garth and Matt are going to have to be on their toes to be across everything. That's them on their toes. <laughs> <laughs> Rather worryingly. Uh, right, let's take a look at uh, all the latest scores in the Barclays Premier League. Uh, Arsenal. 5-1 up on Southampton. Own goals from Jus Hoifelt and Nathaniel Klein. Strikes from Lucas Podolski and Javinho have put the home side firmly in control. Southampton got one back through Danny Fox. Uh, Matthew Lighton has given Aston Villa hope of their first win in the Premier League this season with a nicely struck volley. Uh, Dimitar Berbatov right in the groove for Fulham at Craven Cottage. He fired them ahead with a curling finish. He got a second from the penalty spot. West Brom have also had Peter Odenwingi sent off. Uh, Manchester United... Three 3-0 up on Wigan. Uh, they missed a first-half penalty through Javier Hernandez, but Hernandez and Paul Scholes and uh, Alex Butner on his bent on his on his bent no? on his debut even have put them in control. Goalless between QPR and Chelsea, and it's Stoke one, Manchester City one. A Peter Crouch goal gave the home side the lead. Javi Garcia headed the champions back on terms. Told you it was goalless a loft to throw between QPR and Chelsea, but all the discussion pre-match and it will be post-match was on whether there would be a handshake between Anton Fernand and John Terry. There wasn't. Terry put his hand out. He tried to get Fernand to shake his hand. Anton Fernand kept going, moving the mascot along, kept shaking hands with the Chelsea players. And then when he got to Ashley Cole, Cole didn't put his hand out. Fernand didn't make any attempt to shake his hand. Cole turned around and spat in the background as Fernand went on to shake the rest of the Chelsea players' hands. No handshake at Loftus Road between those three. As far as the game itself is concerned, Jonathan Ledyard, it's been bubbling, as you've said. And it's boiling, and you cannot keep John Terry from out of the public eye, because just a few moments ago he pulled up really short. In fact, he just stopped. It looked like one of his knees had knocked and locked. But the, uh, the good news for John Terry and Chelsea fans is that he is back on the pitch. But it seemed rather distasteful almost, given the Olympic spirit, the Paralympic spirit as well, that a whole host of QPR fans in the main stand leapt up and cheered and gave him all sorts of abuse. But that's been the story of the game, really. He's been the subject of boos, as has Ashley Cole, and his defence has been rocking, particularly in this second half, when Queen's Park Rangers very much in the ascendancy. Shots coming in from Mackey, from Granero, Fallen and Park with a header which should have gone past Petr Cech. They've just sent on Cisse for Sean Wright Phillips. The better chances for Chelsea in the first half, but we are still awaiting the breakthrough goal. Nil-nil so far. As you can see in the Championship, Craig Bellamy has scored for Cardiff against Leeds midway through the second half. Bristol City back on level terms against Blackburn through Stephen Pearson, second of the season. If you weren't with us on the HD channel, Jordan Rhodes has got his first goal for the away side this afternoon. Marlon King's third of the season means that could be a shock in the Championship with Birmingham 2-0 up at Nottingham Forest and Chesterfield now lead Wickham by two goals to one in League Two. Back to the Premier League. Stoke won Manchester City won and Ivan Gaskell by the looks of it. Mario Balotelli having a row with a linesman. Yes, that's a shock, isn't it? Uh, he's having a row with just about everybody. I think the, the person he has a row with most often, though, is probably himself. But there was an incident here which will uh, bear further scrutiny. Uh, Andy Wilkinson, who uh, certainly can put himself around a bit, he's a tough old customer, a local boy, Andy Wilkinson. He's, he's one of their own here. And he and uh, Balotelli, there was a coming together. It was very difficult to see. It was on the far side as to whether Wilkinson's arm was raised into Balotelli's face, although Balotelli certainly made a movement towards Wilkinson. And I guess it was six of one, half a dozen of the other. But there was a suggestion that Wilkinson's arm went into the face of Balotelli. He certainly made the most of it. There were all sorts of conversations took place. Uh, he, he, he feels got at 
uh, all the time, doesn't he? And he felt got out then. At the moment, though, 12 minutes to go. That The more important news is it's still 1-1. Will Michael Owen appear? The fans really want it, but just a word on that. It's very difficult to see how he can be accommodated. What are you going to do, take Crouch off? No way, he's played terrifically well. He's a focal point. Walters, no, works so hard and stops Clichy. I can't quite see where they're going to fit him in into this current team today. It's 1-1. Sean O'Driscoll has been managing 600 games in league football and Nottingham Forest have got one back to mark that occasion. Simon Cox is third of the season, so it's now Forest 1, Birmingham 2. And Izzy McLeod's third of the season means Portsmouth have got one back against Walsall in League 1. Uh, they trail by two goals to one. Back to the Premier League. Richard Askham and Manchester United made hard work of Wigan this afternoon. They did in the first half, uh, Mark, but in this second half they've uh, really got going. Uh, Manchester United 3, Wigan nil. It took them a while to get going, but in this second half they really have cut loose. Paul Scholes on his 700th appearance got the first after Al Habsi could only parry a nanny shot. Javier Hernandez reacted quickly to tap in a second, and then on his debut Alex Butner went on a, a bullocking run and aided by some... Awful Wigan defending, really. They ended with the fullback's cross come shot, tamely deflecting into the net off the Latix goalkeeper, who will feel as though he should have kept it out. There was little sign of this, though, as you mentioned in the first half, where United really stuttered and Wigan countered to great effect. Aruna Kone with a glorious chance. It could have been different if it had put that away just before the break. This after. Al Habsi had saved a Hernandez penalty early on as well. Ryan Giggs on his 600th Premier League appearance and Scholes have gone off replaced by Nick Powell and a certain uh, Robin Van Persie. So it might still be a, a difficult last 10 minutes for Wigan Athletic. A bullocking run. Uh, Cardiff, 2 0 up on Leeds. Peter Whittingham's fourth of the season. Told you Port Vale were the top scorers in League Two. They've turned it round at Plymouth. A goal down. They're now 2 1 up. And Charlie McDonald's first of the season means the MK Dons have taken the lead against high flying Yeovil in League One. They are a goal up. To the Emirates next, where Arsenal fans really shouldn't be worried about their side scoring goals. John Anderson. No, it was two in three games before today. It's now seven in four. Arsenal leading by five goals to one. A really, really emphatic display by them. It started in the 11th minute when Jos Hoyvelt deflected a Gibbs cross into his own net. Podolski then curled a wonderful free kick for 2-0. Jovino low inside the post from Arteta's ball to make it three. And uh, even before half-time, there was a fourth, another own goal, Nathaniel Klein deflecting in another Gibbs cross. Saints pulled one back. It's the first goal Arsenal have conceded this season when Chesney dropped the ball at the feet of Danny Fox, but normal service has been resumed in the uh, second half. Aaron Ramsey on as a substitute. A wonderful jinking run into the box. He deserved a goal but could only hit the post. Didn't matter, though. Jovino was on hand to tap in his second and Arsenal's fifth. Arsenal five, Southampton one. On for a shock in the Blue Square Bet Premier this afternoon. Macclesfield, the leaders at start of play, behind 3-1 to Nuneaton. Back to the Premier League. Mark Webber has watched Fulham West Brom this afternoon. Steve Clark's going to be furious in his post-match interviews, isn't he? Oh, I think so. Fulham 2, West Brom and Chalby nil. because two moments of disciplinary madness, really. I suppose the only difference in parts between West Brom and Fulham in this game. West Brom had the better of the early chances, but then Berbatov returned to normal service with a sublime chip in the area to score that opener for Fulham. Minutes later, though, Peter Ardenwingi given a red card for unnecessarily kicking out at Sasha Reiter. He had to go for that. And at 10 men, and then a bad tackle by the baggies, Billy Jones, Berbatov scoring the resultant penalty for that. And they've been inspired by that as they go charging forward now. But in the second half, uh, West Brom brought on Lukaku, and once or twice they've been able to get the ball to him, and Schwarter had to make a full-body save a few moments ago to stop West Brom getting something back from this. So, probably, uh, hope not lost completely. There's still something in West Brom. So, now, here comes Berbatov, stopped by Foster. Fulham 2, West Brom and Albion. No. Uh, Albion have lost five out of six games in all competitions in Scotland this season, but they lead Stranraer in League Two this afternoon. Mark McGigan, uh, ten minutes from time, has put them 2-1 up. Andrew James has watched Aston Villa Swansea this afternoon, and as you've been telling us all afternoon, Andrew, it's a positive Villa Park. 
Yes, very much so. In terms of Swansea, just briefly, if they lose, it will be their first defeat in the Premier League, of course, this season. And that gives you an idea of the magnitude of Villa's performance. They lead 1-0, the goal from Matthew Loughton in the first half. The young right back at the edge of the box when a set play came over, took it nicely on his chest, thumped it past Vorm. It looked from the pictures as if Vorm had perhaps dived too soon and dived over the ball. But since then, the story has really been about Villa's energy. They've set about Swansea. They've had two or three players over in every particular situation. And since half-time, they've introduced their new players, Westwood and Bentenke, the Belgian Congo striker who's on the ball at the moment. And he really has brought Villa Park to life. I saw Villa Mark a couple of times at the end of last season, and it's a different place now. This Aston Villa team under Paul Lambert seems to be on its way at last. Villa 1, Swansea 0. Four for Jake Cassidy this season. Tranmere League Coventry by a goal to nil. That put them, could put them top of League One this evening. And four for Robin Schroot as well. Stevenage have pulled it back against Crewe. Stevenage two, Crewe two. And speaking of four, a fourth has gone in at Old Trafford. Richard Askham. Yes, and speaking of Crewe, where Mark, it's an ex-Crewe boy signed by Manchester United in the summer. Nick Powell, who's got it. A superb strike. It came out to him just outside the box, a good touch, took him past the defender and just outside the D, he thumped it past Ali Al Habsi with his right foot, a cracking strike, a striker of great promise in the lower leagues, he's got his first goal for Manchester United, took it superbly and United lead by four goals to nil. I just wonder, Matt Holland, whether as well as the strike, you were impressed by the little feint as well that he threw yeah. the Wigan defender before he shot. Yeah, I mean, it, the ball came to him on the edge of the box. It was a mistake by James McCarthy. He gave it away on the edge of the box. Uh, and when it came to Nick Powell, he could easily have had a shot, but it would have been blocked. Just feinted to shoot, took it to the right-hand side. I think Al Habsi will think he probably should have done a little better. He got a good hand to it. But great strike and what a story, I mean, on, on his home debut like that. It's interesting, isn't it? Because even though they're 4-0 they're up at Manchester United, you could probably argue that maybe... Fulham's performance over West Brom, Arsenal's over Southampton are the more impressive this afternoon. Uh, yes, um, but uh, what I like about um, Powell, I've Powell. Just, Powell, I've just seen, he talks about the, the shimmy, the shift. If you're a player with any sort of striking ability, as soon as you get into an area of space in front of the box, what do you want to do? You want to score the goal, you want to have a go. And the moment he picked it up, he got the space and he made the most of that space and got his shot in and he got the, he got the rewards he deserved. Uh, Cardiff 2 leads 1 in the Championship. Rodolfo Austin uh, pulling one back for Leeds. Paul Vale increased their lead at Plymouth through Ben Williamson. 12 minutes to go there, but it's Plymouth 1, Port Vale 3. Confirmation of Nick Powell's goal for Manchester United. Still 8 minutes to go at Old Trafford. And in the SPL, where earlier Celtic were beaten 2-1 by St Johnston, Motherwell are taking full advantage. They lead at Dundee. Ian Turner with the details. Look as if they were going to take full advantage, but as you say, Mark, they certainly have. They have come back from the dead with two goals from Michael Higdon. He scored a hat-trick last time out a fortnight ago. He's got two today in quick succession, the first in 73 minutes after Robert Douglas and the Dundee goal failed to hold a cross from the right and Higdon bundled it home. And just a moment ago, after a corner from the right from Mark Haitley, not Mark Haitley, Tom Haitley, his son, of course, a header from Higdon, a bullet header from two yards out, has put Motherwell in charge of this game and heading for three points. Dundee one, Motherwell two. He could probably still do a job, could Mark Haley. He's as thin now as he was when he played football. Uh, Tranmere now 2 0 up in League One against Coventry. Andy Robinson won the League One Player of the Month. He scored today, it's his fourth of the season, and they're 2 0 up on managerless Coventry. Let's get details of the Cardiff Leeds game next in the Championship. Jason Mohammed. Fantastic atmosphere here, Mark. Always is for Cardiff City, Leeds United. It's been tense all afternoon. This game exploded into life in the 64th minute when Craig Bellamy ran onto the pitch. Three minutes later, he smashed. Smashed a free kick, right-footed into the top left-hand corner. Tom Lees then dragged Nicky Maynard down in the box. Upstep Peter Whittingham, he rarely misses his fourth of the season. And Rodolf Austin has set up a thrilling finish with another brilliant free kick. This one from 25 yards. What a second half. Cardiff City 2, Leeds United 1. 2-2, two, two. last time we were at Ashton Gate between Bristol City and Blackburn, but there's been a crucial fifth goal there this afternoon, Hamish Marshall. And it's gone to Blackburn, and it's a worthy goal to win the game if that's what it ends up doing. Look out for this one on the Football League show tonight. Superb run from substitute Ruben Rushina. He'd only been on the field three minutes. He started in a halfway line, looked as if he'd lost it a couple of times, and eventually he finished it off. 
Both sides have been ahead in this game, but Blackburn are ahead now until a shot comes in. And Bristol City have got themselves an equaliser, a sixth goal in this game. And it's another substitute, Sam Baldock, who shot from 20 yards. Blackburn thought they'd won it. Bristol City have other ideas. We've got seven minutes to go. It's Bristol City three, Blackburn three. Sam Baldock, second of the season for Bristol City since he joined them from West Ham. Gillingham, the League Two lead, is now 4-0 up on Bristol Rovers. That's going to be Bristol Rovers' worst start to a season in 21 years. In League One, the lead is Notts County at Oldham. One all last time with Steve Lee. Steve Lee, they're down to ten men, but... It's now Oldham 1, Notts County 2, and a goal that had lot in the creation from Jamal Campbell-Rice, and he scored it. He sprinted virtually the length of the boundary park pitch, got in a position, his cross sailed over the head of Alex Seasad. I think he meant it as a cross, it went over Seasad's head, and Notts County fans at that end were delighted, and Oldham will feel very hard done by because they missed a penalty through Robbie Simpson to go ahead against the 10-man. They had Andre Bucard sent off in the first half. The the dealers lead 2-1. We've got about nine minutes left. I've just been told the earth-shattering news that Michael Owen has put his shin pads on at the Britannia Stadium, but rather than get an update on that, we'll get news of a goal at Villa Park. Andrew James. It's a goal for Aston Villa to surely win the match now, and it's a goal for the new signing, Christian Bentenke, the man they signed from Genk in Belgium for £7 million. Villa fans so uncertain about where their goals were going to come from this season, and they found a new hero in this man. It was a dreadful mistake in the Swansea defence. The ball headed backwards on the halfway line, then it went over uh, Ashley Williams, and uh, with the goalkeeper Vorm stranded, it was a simple tap-in for Bentenke. But Villa seemed to have found a goal scorer. They found their form, and their fans are back in love with them. Aston Villa 2, Swansea 0. Accrington Stanley back on level terms against Dagenham and Redbridge through Peter Murphy. Junior Stanislas, second of the season, means Burnley are leading Peterborough 5-2. Both those sides in the bottom two of the Championship at the start of play. And East Stirling have their first victory of the season. They've played for and lost for up until today in Division 3, but they've beaten Stirling three goals to one. Back to the Emirates, John Anderson, another goal. Yes, uh, Saints have been hit for six. They might be hit for seven here as they clear their ranks, but they couldn't prevent Theo Walcott a substitute. Uh, making it 6-1. It was lovely play by Arsenal. Cazorla setting up Thomas Vermaelen, who'd come up from the back. He hit that shot really well. It was a great save by Kelvin Davis, but it broke to Walcott, who, of course, missed England duty with a virus in midweek. He's uh, fit and well back on the pitch, and he was able to side-foot the ball in as Southampton look for uh, a goal themselves through Jason Punchin, who might still get the shot away and does, but Chesney saves. It remains Arsenal 6, Southampton 1. And he didn't celebrate, didn't Theo Walcott, because obviously he's playing against his former club. But it's going to be three points for Fulham this afternoon. Another goal at the cottage, Mark Webber. Indeed, no chance of a comeback now. Fulham three, West Brom and Chalby nil. Steve Sidwell, the man who did it. Berbatov running down the wing, he crossed in. Rodelega got that on the back of that cross, but he headed onto the crossbar. The rebound came back. Sidwell wasn't going to make any mistake on this one, and he knocked it in. Three nil to Fulham. A bit stranger, Alloa this season in League Two. They yet to win at home, but they have a 100% record away, and that's going to continue. They're two 0 down to Stenhouse Muir, and as you can see, Forest have turned things round against Birmingham. Peter Slater. Well, we waited three quarters of a game for a goal. We've now had four, plenty of pressure from Forest, but undone by two goals in four minutes from Birmingham. Hayden Mullins, who rarely scores anything at all, hit the first one. Good finish. Then Nathan Redmond came on as a substitute, low cross, and Marlon King made it too. But Forrest kept playing their neat football under Sean O'Driscoll. Simon Cox, one of their substitutes, pulled one back. Dan Harding, another, has just equalised. We have three minutes left for play. Who knows what's going to happen? It's 2-2. Two -two. Confirmation, as you can see, of Theo Walcott's goal against Southampton. Jose Baxter, who left Everton in the summer, he went to Oldham. And Oldham are back on level terms against the League One leaders at the start of play. Oldham 2, Notts County 2. Back to the Championship to find out about how Burnley have run away with it in the second half against Peterborough. James Mason. Yeah, they lead 5-2, Chappers, and it's been a topsy-turvy game. 2-2 two -two at, at half-time at Charlie Austin's fifth and sixth goals of the season look to uh, be decisive here. The striker firing home from inside the area after a pass from Chris McCann. He's second from the penalty spot, and junior Stanislas making it 5-2 to Burnley. 
Amir, sorry, I was just, Amir Begovic has great just produced save. an astonishing it's save, hasn't he, at the Britannia? It's an unbelievable save. I mean, it's, it's low down to his right, and he, he gets a great hand on it, and he pushes it against the post, and it comes back into his body. I think it was Garcia, the goal scorer, was. Uh, who got the That's header again. Thumping header. Thumping header, low down, and he's got right down to the bottom, tips it onto the post, it's come back into his hands. It's one of those slightly strange situations where all sets of players put their head in their hands. It, like City players, because they didn't score, and Stoke, I think, out of sheer amazement. fortune that it didn't get <laughs> amazement and fortune that it uh, didn't go in. Anybody looking like breaking the deadlock at Loftus Road this afternoon? Jonathan Ledyard. Yes, a few moments ago. How did he miss? Because he's done everything else pretty much textbook style. Perfect. Idan Ezard, set up by Victor Moses, a barrelling, or would you like, bollocking run down the right-hand side. Played it straight into the middle of goal, six yards out, way, way over the goal, almost out of the stadium. There is a pigeon, by the way, which is not getting too Test match special, Henry Blofeld like, which has just walked around the centre circle for the last five minutes. A Cissé goes close, and it's still nil-nil. I thought he was going to mention buses going past as well as he did his... Uh, oh, my word! What a goal line clearance at the Britannia. There was le let's, let's go to Ivan Gaskell to tell us about it. That was astonishing. Absolutely. City could have won it. That's Manchester City could have won it twice in the last two minutes. They didn't. First, Begovic, as you described, with an absolutely astonishing save from a fine header from Garcia that looked destined to go in. It was touched onto a post and stayed out. And then right at the end, substitute Dzeko with... Virtually his first touch of the game, lobbing the goalkeeper, but I think it was Ryan Shawcross chasing back and in the nick of time managed to hook it over his shoulder and clear it. I think it's about right. 1-1, intense, absorbing, enjoyable, but it's a stalemate. Stoke's seventh draw in eight matches, but it's been a game that I think both will feel satisfied with the point. Amir Begovic had a big smile on his face at the end there. The final whistle now going at grounds around the country. Let's go to the Emirates. As far as Southampton are concerned, it turned into a similar exercise for West Brom this afternoon, didn't it, Mark Webber? Indeed, Fulham 3, West Brom at Albion Dell. And I suspect if there's a naughty step in the West Brom dressing room, Peter Odenwingy is sitting on it right now for a silly kick-out against Sasha Wright that when he was walking away from him, brought the baggies down to ten men. And arguably, it could be argued that they lost at least a point here. Dimitar Berbatov had put Fulham 1-0 up on his home debut. A great chip come shot. But West Brom was still creating chances before that sending off. A bad tackle by Billy Jones headed Fulham a second, a pe second goal through a penalty. Berbatov doing the damage there. Now Lukaku came on for West Brom in the second half and did test Schwartz a couple of times actually. But Fulham looked like they were always going to get something else. And finally they got number three after Rodelega's header rebounded off the crossbar and into Steve Sidwell's path. He's not Peter Ongen Wingy, he's a very naughty boy. Fulham 3, West Brom 0. <sighs> slightly. It was a wild coming this afternoon at Old Trafford, but eventually Manchester United saw off Wigan. All the details in their 4-0 win from Richard Askin. Managers often talk about uh, momentum, don't they? And after finding it elusive in the first half, Manchester United were unstoppable when they built up ahead of steam in the second. On Sir Alex Ferguson's 500th league game in charge, Paul Scholes making his 700th appearance got the first. Javier Hernandez, who had a penalty saved in the first half, the second before debutant Alex Butner's shot come cross went in off Ali Al Habsi for the third. And Nick Powell on his home debut as well, smacked in a fourth. Wigan overrun after the break were a completely different proposition in the first 45. Aruna Kone should have finished a typically incisive counter-attack, and at that point the home side were desperately missing the bench, Robin Van Persie. By the end, Wigan, who battled to the last, were dead on their feet. Manchester United 4, Wigan 0. And you may have spotted we're going to Villa Park next. Up to it today, Villa outplayed them and fully deserved their three points. Aston Villa then get their first win of the season, Swansea their first defeat, and it's Villa 2, Swansea 0. Big win for Villa, big, big win it looks like for Blackburn. They've left it late, Hamish Marshall, but... They're leading by four goals to three and we're deep in stoppage time. It looks as if they've won this one at the death and it will be their first victory here in 103 years. Thanks to Scott Dan with a shot from inside the penalty area in stoppage time after a corner. This game went one way and then the other. Albert Adoma gave Bristol City a lead after 43 seconds and then a fourth, a fifth goal comes in and that does seal it this time. Jordan Rhodes, who got the first goal for Blackburn, gets one to finish things off as well. Blackburn could be going top of the championship tonight. 
deep in stoppage time. It's Bristol City three, Blackburn five. Yeah, it looks like they are going top two this afternoon for Jordan Rhodes. Four in total for the season. Him there, his first Blackburn goals this afternoon. You may have seen it on the video printer as well that the conference leaders, Macclesfield, who were three one down at Nuneaton, scored twice in the last couple of minutes. It's finished three all. So as things stand, they would stay on top of the conference this evening. Back to the SPL. Celtic beaten 2-1 by St Johnston earlier this afternoon. Have Motherwell taken advantage at Dundee? Ian Turner. They have league leaders Motherwell with two late goals from top scorer Michael Higdon came from behind to take all three points against an unlucky Dundee side who gave it their all but it proved just not to be enough in the end. Higdon left it late to add his already impressive goal tally this season. Dundee looking as if they might hang on to the lead given to them through Colin Nishi's early header. Motherwell happy with the result in the end. Dundee certainly happy with the performance. Dundee won, Motherwell two. Back to the Premier League, talking to uh, Garth Crooks and uh, Matt Holland. I just wonder, we I didn't really touch on it whilst we were all the goals were flying in, but when Fernando Torres was substituted, he went straight down the tunnel. He didn't stay on the dugout. Do you think questions will be asked to Roberto Di Matteo about that behaviour? I don't think so. I think at the time, Chelsea was struggling and they needed to make a change. Uh, I think Di Ma, uh, Roberto Di Matteo's may well have come of age because there was times last season when I thought he might take him off and he didn't and he took off Sturridge instead. This time he took off his centre forward who was struggling and brought on Daniel Sturridge who suddenly tried to make a change and to affect the game. Um, so no, not at all. It was well on um, point in the end though, wasn't it? It was for, a very well on Chelsea point. because they were under real pressure in the second half. I thought first half they were slightly the better side but as the, half, the second half um, went on, QPR looked the more likely. Um, Zamora had a great chance. Park's header. I mean, Park. Well, eight that's the interesting thing, isn't it, with QPR? Because the questions have been asked this season about them defensively. Yeah, yeah. Today, they were very strong at the back and it seemed to lack the poise yeah. in front of goal. They dealt really well with set pieces today. I mean, you know, Chelsea carry a threat with, with Terry in particular. And uh, they dealt with that threat really, really well. I thought Anton Ferdinand, you know, obviously the pressure that he's had up today. Outstanding. I thought he was excellent today. He had, a, he had a wonderful game. Um, but as you say, going forward, they brought uh, Cissé on late on for Sean Wright Phillips. And he looked like he, he might cause a, them a, one or two problems. Um, but they did lack a little bit going forward today, definitely. Big wins for Aston Villa. And really, Fulham. I'm so pleased you've asked me because about that because I thought Villa played fantastic today. Sheer endeavour mm. and desire was fantastic. He's brought in one or two players from the low leagues. He's given them the chance on the big stage and they've responded. The fans have responded as well because they can see the effort. And, and, and suddenly Villa Park is buzzing again because the fans want them to do well because of the effort. Ben Tenke, seven million, never heard of him. Perhaps I should have done. I do now. And I am pleased that I have pleased you. <laughs> That's what I'm here for. Uh, let's get the full classified results, shall we, on final score now. Here's Mike Quest. And beginning with the Barclays Premier League. Arsenal 6, Southampton 1. Aston Villa 2, Swansea City 0. Fulham 3, West Bromwich Albion, nil. Manchester United, four. Wigan Athletic, nil. Norwich City, nil. West Ham United, nil. Queen's Park Rangers, nil. Chelsea, nil. Stoke City, one. Manchester City, one. And the game between Sunderland and Liverpool is an evening kick-off at 5.30. On to the Empire Championship. Barnsley, one. Blackpool, one. Bolton Wanderers, two. Watford, one. Bristol City, 3. Blackburn Rovers, 5. Burnley, 5. Peterborough United, 2. Cardiff City, 2. Leeds United, 1. Huddersfield Town, 1. Derby County, 0. Hull City, 4. Millwall, 1. Middlesbrough, 2. Ipswich Town, 0. And Nottingham Forest, 2. Birmingham City, 2. In the Empire League 1, AFC Bournemouth 1, Hartlepool United 1. Carlisle United 2, Swindon Town 2. Colchester United 1, Doncaster Rovers 2. Milton Keynes Dons 1, Yeovil Town 0. Oldham Athletic 2, Notts County 2. Portsmouth 1, Walsall 2. Preston North End 1, Crawley Town 2. Sheffield United 1, Bury 1. Shrewsbury Town 0, Scunthorpe United 1. Stevenage 2, Crew Alexandra 2. And Tranmere Rovers 2, Coventry City 0. 
In the Empire League 2, AFC Wimbledon 1, Rochdale 2. Aldershot Town 0, Morecambe 0. Bradford City 3, Barnet 0. Burton Albion 4, Oxford United 0. Cheltenham Town 1, Southend United 3. Chesterfield 3, Wickham Wanderers 1. Dagenham and Redbridge 1, Accrington Stanley 1. Exeter City 1, York City 1. Fleetwood Town 1, Northampton Town 0. Gillingham 4, Bristol Rovers 0. Plymouth Argyle 1, Port Vale 3. And Rotherham United 1, Torquay United 0. The Blue Square bet Premier Barrow 0, Newport County 1 is a latest score. The game between Cambridge United and AFC Telford United, an evening kick-off at 5.15. Dartford 4, Hereford United 0. Forest Green Rovers 1, Alfreton Town 1. Gateshead 0, Tamworth 2. Kidderminster 0, Grimsby Town 0. Lincoln City 3, Hyde United 2. Luton Town 0, Wrexham 0. Mansfield Town 2, Braintree Town 0. Dunneaton Town 3, Macclesfield Town 3. Southport 1, Ebbsfleet United 0. And Stockport County 1, Woking 2. Into Scotland and the Clydesdale Bank Scottish Premier League, Dundee 1, Motherwell 2. Hibernian 2, Kilmarnock 1. Inverness, Caledonian Thistle 1, Aberdeen 1. St Johnston 2, Celtic 1. And St Mirren 2, Hearts 0. The Iron Brew Scottish Division 1, Cowden B 3, Greenock Morton 4. Dumbarton 0, Dunfermline 2. Hamilton Academical 1, Falkirk 1. Livingston 1, Partick Thistle 2. And Wraith Rovers 2, Airdrie United 0. The Scottish Division 2, Albion Rovers 2, Stranraer 1. Allower Athletic 0, Stenhouse Muir 2. Arbroath 2, East Fife 0. Air United 2, Queen of the South 4. And Forfar Athletic 1, Brecon City 0. The Scottish Division 3, Annan Athletic 0, Rangers 0. East Stirlingshire 3, Stirling Albion 1. Elgin City 2, Peterhead 0. Montrose 3, Berwick Rangers 1. And Queen's Park 1, Clyde 0. The Corbett Sports Welsh Premier, Ballatown 1, Prestat in Town 2 is a later score. Bangor City 4, Avonlido 1. Carmarthen Town 0, The New Saints 0. Gap Connors Key 1, Aberystwyth Town 2. Llanethley 0, Newtown 3. And Portalvert Town 4, Airbus UK Broughton 4. Finally, the Danske Bank Irish Premiership, Ballina Mallard 2, Portadown 0. Ballymena United 1, Dungannon Swifts 1. Crusaders 2, Donegal Celtic 0. Glentoran 0, Colrain 0. Linfield 1, Cliftonville 2. And finally, Lisbon Distillery 0, Glenavon 1. Let's have a look at the tables then. Chelsea lost their 100% record, but they stayed top of the Barclays Premier League. A point ahead of Manchester United, whose win over Wigan moves them from fifth to second. Arsenal go from eighth to third. Southampton's fourth defeat in four games leaves them rooted to the foot of the table. Villa's win against Swansea takes them up to 11th. Liverpool will hope to move out of the bottom three when they play Sunderland in the tea time kickoff. Blackburn replaced Brighton at the top of the championship after that late, late show at Bristol City. Four teams are just behind them, though, just by a point. And as far as the bottom is concerned, Peterborough remain bottom of the pile. They've lost all five matches so far. Tranmere moved to the top of League One, taking full advantage of Notts County's draw at Oldham. And Colchester slipped to the bottom of the table after positive results for Berry and Scunthorpe. Coventry are now just above them. Gillingham are still flying high in League Two. They're now three points clear of the chasing pack. Exeter replaced by Port Vale in second. And it's as you were 
in the basement with Barnett propping everybody else up. Macclesfield left it late today, but that draw at Nuneaton means they stay top of the table. Wrexham and Forest Green Rovers just behind them on 18 points. And Kidderminster are still bottom of the conference, but they have closed to within a point of Hyde. And Motherwell stay top of the SPL thanks to victory against Dundee. Celtic's shock defeat by St Johnston sees them slip to fifth. Those two results see Dundee and St Johnston swap places at the bottom of the table. So you can see all those Premier League games on Match of the Day. That's at 10.20 tonight with Gary Lineker. And then straight after it, all the goals from the Football League. And there have been plenty of them today from 10 to midnight. Colin, and Match of the Day too with highlights of Reading against Spurs. BBC One, 10.25 tomorrow evening. And we've got some live football with you during the week on BBC Two in the European Championships. If England's women beat Croatia, they will qualify. That's at 4.45. You can also see it on the HD channel. Performance of the day for you two? Um, probably, I mean, Arsenal, six goals. They answered a few questions, really. We know with Van Persie going, they hadn't scored a couple of games. Been good defensively, but there's question marks about them going forward. I think Arsenal scoring six goals is a big statement today. And Garth, for you? I'd, I'd have to go along with that. Um, they look like a team of old. Um, no disrespect to the opposition, but when you score six goals at home, it's impressive. OK, thank you for the moment. You can have your say on 6.06 tonight. Uh, I'll be on with Robbie uh, on Five Live, also on the BBC Sport website in just less than an hour. Uh, that's it from us. Still loads more interviews and reaction to come, so press your red button for that or watch us on the BBC Sport website. We'll see you next Saturday, 2.30 on the HD channel. Thanks to Gareth and Matt. Bye.